I, we should do some kind of hello. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Got to do that. Hello. Hello. W- welcome to the worst day of my life. My name is Cherish. I'm Megan. There, we did it. Yay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it actually came out smooth. Yeah. I. Uh, it's been a little while since we've seen each other. Yeah. Should we just tell them about? Yeah. What, ha- what has we happened? <laughs> so the last time we recorded together, um, Megan had been exposed to COVID. But she took three, three total negative yeah. tests mm-hmm. before she came to visit me. Yeah. And I said, that's fine. Come yeah. visit. She even called the health department and was like, hey, I think I've been exposed. But I've had three negative tests, and they were like, go for it. Go be in public. Go yeah. live your best life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then a few days after she comes to visit, yeah, we got a phone call. Yeah. The dreaded phone call. Yeah. That was just... You gave my children COVID. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've avoided it for two years <laughs> successfully. Hey, I, I, I feel it. I'd avoided it. Well, I mean, I do think that I had the original whatever, like, COVID of the beginnings of the United States of, the of America. <laughs> yeah. The early 2020. Um, before yeah, you they, thought you had it before they even knew what it was. Yeah, or, like, tested for it. And by the time that um, I had, like, antibodies checked, it was, like, way past the point where... At least that's what my doctor said, but I yeah. think it would show the antibodies. Mm-hmm. Plus, I have elevated antibodies and other whatever for my target. Other <sighs> yeah, but this was the old Omicron dingo. I wonder, um, yeah, then uh, Savannah's boyfriend, Jared, got COVID. Oh, no, our biggest fan. Yeah, a little Jer Bear. Um, but he, Savannah also was around him because I guess he came back. Or he went to a family, I think, wedding it was. Mm -hmm. And then everybody, everybody there got got sick. But it took him, again, like me, a week to actually develop the, you know, actual, like, the illness, like, just takes hold. Um, But, yeah, his, like, a lot of his little family members got sick. So he he and I were, like, basically, like, in the same time frame. But Mm -hmm. that was, like, was supposed to go up to Bellingham. To see my little baby child Savannah um, last this last weekend, we were gonna take the train and like do a little romantic, you know, I don't know, train ride up mm-hmm. there. We were gonna stay in the weird hotel that we stayed in last year that had um, advertised like um, jacuzzi, heart shaped jacuzzi. Well, or just we wanted heart shaped oh. jacuzzi or at least something that was. It was just like a basic bitch bathtub with like Aww. some jets which yeah. is fine too like we shoved our bodies into yeah. it but I think we were expecting like a different type yeah. of but it was still fun in its own way and Jared and Savannah stayed in the one next to ours mm-hmm. and we actually had an adjoining door nice. kind yeah. of thing so if we wanted they could come over and hang out and then oh and then we watched the Super Bowl with them last year and so we were trying to make it like a tr- tradition yeah. um, even though none of us are really well I think Kenny's probably like, the closest to a, a football fan mm-hmm. um then of the group and he's not even that luckily like oh yeah thank like, god I'm so um, glad some Patrick other people i've heard about sports oh, yeah so like crazy like my like i think my dad is who made me hate sports because of his um like he would get really dramatic mad. and yeah. mad and like people get throw pissed. shit yeah and well yeah scary people let it dictate their entire mm-hmm year like yeah oh, it's like nuts yeah I remember him getting like being so pissed off team loss and just yeah. like we were in the day we couldn't go have like a nice time because he was pissed off because a stupid fucking team lost oh, just like get a grip man anyway sorry well <laughs> no that's fine <laughs> go for it but um so after you called and said that you had COVID oh yes yes oh god it keeps getting worse <laughs> this is when it keeps oh, no, this no, is no. when it gets worse then um <laughs> We all went, I think that night, or maybe the night after, Uh, uh, we all went to go get tests. Yeah. And um, all of those tests came back negative. So we're like, cool, no big deal. And then Scout started getting a cold. Oh, baby Scout. (laughs) 
Spot has never been sick before. Yeah. Like she's been the healthiest, like knock on friggin' wood, but yeah. we've been so fucking too. lucky. She's never had a diaper rash. Mm. She's never had a sniffle. I mean, like nothing. Wow. She has never been sick. And uh so with her getting like a cough, she would like cough and and look at me like what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. Fix that. I don't like it. Help. You know, yeah. and it was just like it was so sad that she just, like, doesn't <laughs> understand. And she was just, like, so... She just had a little fever. Oh, no. And she... You know, after she had her fever overnight, then I brought her to the pediatrician. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yep, she tested positive. Oh, yes. So she's the only one of us that actually tested positive, but I'm assuming all yeah. the rest of us are positive as well, of yeah. course. But um, I haven't gotten sick at all. Good. I have been... Stay that way. A-OK, -okay, which is great because I'm so fucking scared. I know. That was my biggest fear. I'm I kept so thinking about you when I was like, um, well, the, what, the, the main night, the worst night for me were like, because my body temperature is so low anyway. Like my temperature was like 62.4 or something <laughs> insane. Yeah. And then what like, the yeah, like the, ho the, the hottest te my temperature got, which I'm sure I was running a fever for me was like um like 72 degrees or something are you kidding <laughs> no i'm not what? kidding yeah my temperatures because my thyroid i think it's just like i have a really really low body temperature so i'm always f like cold yeah so anyway so i was just like felt like i had a fever like i was sweating i was like having chills all that but i also couldn't like i was starting to really freak out because i felt like i couldn't breathe and then i started wigging out because I couldn't find my asthma inhaler. Mm -hmm. I was like searching around. Um, Kenny was like, we were looking everywhere for it. I never found it. I still haven't found it. I probably should call and get another one. Yeah. Just like, um, but that was scary at the point where I was like, I don't want to like be a drama queen and like say something um, until I was like, really like if I got to a point where I felt like I needed to go, I would have gone to the yeah. hospital, but I was trying not to make like a big deal out of it. I was yeah. just, and then um, thinking about it was kind of just my own like psychosomatic type of brain. Like mm -hmm. we were talking about, I, um, I think I was like psyching myself out. So I was just like laid there and like, just very much focused on my uh, breathing. But the whole time I was like thinking about you and me not wanting you yeah. specifically, not that I don't care about anybody else in the family. No, but, but everyone like, else's I'm lungs scared are about fine. your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyone else has good, healthy lungs that can deal with that shit. But I, yeah, I'm really scared of it. So luckily, no one has gotten sick. Yeah, Scouts, even her. I mean, she had a fever and a cough for like a day. Yeah, like it was oh, not. Wow. It was not bad at all. Um, and she's fine now. But uh, so you don't have to feel bad about infecting my whole family with COVID. Yeah. I still kind of do. I, I know, but it's just it's just one of those things. Like I don't know, it just makes you there, feel. You like could dirty. not have taken any more precautions <laughs> than you did, unless you just didn't come. But I straight up told you to come. Yeah. I was like, that's plenty. Well, then the other thing too was the health department told me that I could go in public, right. and so I went to get shopping. Uh, Kenny took me over to Warrenton. He couldn't go inside because he was, you know, he was sick. But. Um, so the health department told me that I could go, you know, I was like, I want to go shopping. We don't have any food, you know, is that okay? And they said that was fine. So the first, th pers first person I see at the old <laughs> Warrington Walmart, which isn't even close. I get to drive over the Restoria Megler, Megler Bridge is my coworker. And then I'd been out of work for a week because they didn't oh, yeah. want me there because yeah. they were worried that I was, you know, mm -hmm. they were so worried about it because I was like around, you know, a positive person. And, uh, so she was like so freaked out by me. She was just like, we were, she's like, Megan. And then I was like, oh, hey, uh, yeah, um, the health department told me I could be here. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I wanted to get a bag, a pro like a produce bag. And she's like backing. I was like, yeah, I know. Like, it's, I, just, I feel weird about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, go about my business. But yeah, I'm, I don't know. I just felt weird. Like I was like, oh, God, I, like, I hope I didn't make anybody sick at the Walmart. This is so scary. It's like what happens is people are like, oh, no, I am getting sick. Uh -huh. I'm going to go get all the supplies I need before oh, yeah. I have to be in my house stuck mm -hmm. for 10 days or whatever. Yeah. And then they go out and just give it to everybody. Right. Yeah. It's, I just, it's so bizarre, though, that they – because what I'm more learning 
are finding out just also through experience is that you're, there's like a window, like where you test positive, but you could still have all of the other symptoms and still be testing negative. Cause that's what happened to Kenny. He, he got really sick first. Yeah. Like he got sick on the Monday and he was like sweating profusely, sh- sh- like shaking, cold, freezing chills, super sick. Like he couldn't get out of bed without just like having it. And he's a pretty strong, like, he's like a tough, like he doesn't, he's like, Oh, I'm immune to everything or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, a man's man, <laughs> but he, um, he was, he was, he doesn't complain. Like he doesn't complain about not feeling well or, you know, even no, if Patrick he has, does. he's a baby. No, he's, he's a sick baby. Like I can hear him blasting ass in the bathroom uh-huh. and I'm like, no, he's like, I'm, and I'm like, are you like, are you okay? And he's like, what, what do you mean? Like, and I'm like, um, well, I heard you have explosive <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> you want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but anyway, want to talk about that, Megan. <laughs> of course, he wants to keep that to himself. <laughs> Anyhow, that's normal. <laughs> I want to be open about all bodily function. I know that's how I you'll live get, my best life. You'll get there. <laughs> talking about bodily fun- dysfunction or function junction, but Patrick will sit in the bathroom <laughs> with me while I'm pooping. He'll walk in there. I, can't I do. lock the door yeah. now. Like it's so weird to lock. Like I feel like I shouldn't have to lock the door, but I do because I like I don't. Yeah, don't want somebody sitting there while you're having your private. No, I don't time. care who it is. Like even Scout. Like yeah. I hate it when she's in there when I'm. Or like pooping. a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Stanley, he comes and he, like his head is level to my crotch and just like wants to like lay his head on my lap or mm-hmm. be like pressed up against me, so I have to throw him out. Um, it's nice when you have like a him. little animal that'll hang out in your pants that are around your ankles. <laughs> have you seen that? Oh, well. That happens to my brother. Yeah. His, his little tiny chihuahua will hang out like in his underwear while he's pooping. Well, well, that cat at work used to do that. She used to crawl into my pants and um, like poke her head out from the side of my underwear. <laughs> that was pretty cute. But um, that's, that's the only that's animal that's gone in my pants. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I have a couple of things I have been waiting to tell you yes 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 one okay so patrick and i co-sleep with scout right she Uh sleeps in the bed with us Uh um that makes i thought that it would be like a huge cock block all the time right there's Uh like a baby in your bed between you so you just bone with the baby no gross (laughs) come on No, <laughs> sorry. It, it it really isn't. If you're th- if you're wondering about co sleeping and what it might what it might be like, yeah, tell me more. Yeah, I will. So it actually kind of makes things more fun hmm. because you have to find somewhere else to do it. Oh, okay, you know? okay. So I it's see like where this is going, and also. There are times where you, you know, you don't get to do it very often. So then when you do get the chance to do it, it's like a little, it's like a little more exciting too, you know? Right. Yeah. So, uh, that's like part of the, part of the fun of, of right now is just like Mm -hmm. finding places that are private, (laughs) (laughs) which is not always possible. Sometimes you have to just go to the floor. Oh. Of the room yeah. or like a wall you or like <laughs> a carpet <laughs> yeah okay um so anyway that being said mm-hmm. the other day i'm sitting and i'm folding laundry on my bed and scout is down on the floor she just like plays with books and stuff while i'm while i'm folding clothes and i'm like i hear which is like her uh-huh gums like chewing on something oh i'm like i'm just gonna look and make sure she's like chewing on something she's supposed to be which everything in my room is like pretty well baby proof but and look and she has a fucking vibrator (gasps) oh no like a silicone (gasps) vibrator thing that was left on the floor oh god has not been cleaned ew 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 (laughs) and she was chewing on it (gasps) Oh, God, no. That's so horrible. I feel so bad. I hope you cleaned it at least after she yes. chewed on yes. it. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. I'm good at cleaning it, but <coughs> I know You're gonna if, get COVID it was in left, your vagina. if it was left. 
<laughs> Why is it so spiky down here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, and speaking of that, right? Mm -hmm. We've been, um, I've been keeping Megan uh, apprised of a, what would you call it? Social experiment mm. that I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't know. She's making a face like she doesn't know what I'm talking about. Are we ta is this podcast a social experience? I'm experiment. No. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm doing a social, another social experiment, which I've been talking to you about and keeping you up to date with. Oh yes, that okay. one. Okay, sorry, it took okay. me a minute. <laughs> it took me a minute. I just decided it would yeah. be funny, maybe, to see if he would say anything mm -hmm. or not. If I just like nonchalantly grow out my bush. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see how long it would take. Yeah. Because I keep it pretty tame. <laughs> Tamed. <laughs> Trimmed. Yeah. yeah. Keep it very under control. Oh, gosh. And it finally, it got to the point uh -huh. where um, I just gave up. Yeah. Because I didn't like how, <laughs> I couldn't handle how much oh, shit it got. Oh, I was wondering about that. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering was if that was going to happen to you. But he never said anything. <gasps> and it's, it's not that he like noticed and was like oh cool she's just doing that now like he never he never even thought about it huh and he saw me naked a million times we had yeah. sex a million times it's like yeah. he just didn't care at all did, did you have you have you brought it up since to him voluntarily like have you been like yeah i hey. told him oh you did tell him yeah okay <laughs> what? I, told him. I was like i was just curious how, to how long it <laughs> so good to notice <laughs> well but i was just curious if he yeah. would notice huh. but he didn't so then it's like it really is just for me which is fine yeah well i personally like to keep my i guess situation tame as well yeah just because i also feel and it's probably not even an accurate feeling but for some reason it makes me feel more clean mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's even like logical thinking but for me, like, I feel like it gets so out of control that things, I just feel like it kind of trapped, like, yeah. more inclined, like, moisture. That uh, sounds so gross to Ugh. even say, ugh, to yeah, get but, trapped But there. it's true. It's the same reason why I shave my armpits. And, like, yeah, Patrick shaves his armpits, too. Did you know that? No. Yeah. Maybe I didn't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. He just doesn't like huh. having, he feels like he sweats more. Yeah. He has hair in there. Yeah. I just, I guess I just don't even really like hair. No. On my body. Mm -mm. Like, I shave either. every day just because I don't I do like too. my leg being... Yeah. Like, it being, like, smooth on my sheets and stuff. Like yeah. my leg. It has nothing to do with, like, what anybody else thinks. Right. But I... Yeah, I like to... My arm hair. Oh, you do your arms? Patrick does his arms sometimes. Yeah. I barely have hair on my arm anyway, but yeah. what hair was there, <laughs> I just prefer it to not be there. Yeah, I don't do my your arms, hair's not, but it's very blonde. Yeah. But I was, I was like thinking back to your, your bush. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> actually, me. well, I was just thinking about this, this guy that I went to middle. Well, I guess it was junior high at that time, junior high. Um, this young man named Jacob and, um, he had really, really, really bright red hair. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had to do pull-ups on the, those bars out in the playground mm -hmm. area, which... Anyway, uh, so we had to do these like pull ups for gym PE or whatever, and he was like went to go do it, and we all we all had to watch each other for some reason, which was kind of intimidating, and just some of us didn't really have good upper arm strength yeah. to pull yourself for a chin up mm -hmm. or pull up and any of that. But I just remember everyone being so mean because he like went to go do that, and his he had like big hairy beaver bush armpit hair yeah. that was just like very bright curly, red. bright red and curly. Like everyone's like. Oh, look at Jacob's, oh, no. you know, pubes in his armpits. And, like, everybody's, like, laughing and freaking out and just, like, shaming him. Poor redheaded kid. <laughs> yeah, oh. it was really sad. I actually really, like, still to this day, I remember that very vividly because I just thought it was, like, so mean that um, everybody, but he really did have, like, um, like none of, uh, nobody else had started, like, getting hair under their oh, armpits yeah, yet, too. I think it was just, deal. like, yeah. not just that he had hair, but he had, like, a whole... 
like heads worth of hair <laughs> in his armpit. That's like my brother. If he like takes his shirt off, it looks like he's like wearing an orange sweater. He's like so, <laughs> it's, like, so hairy. Yeah. I've never been into hairy guys because my dad and my brother are so hairy. It yeah. like, grosses me out. Well, Kenny has a like a manageable amount of hairiness on his body, but I do his hair. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm his hairstylist. Oh, of his head. Yeah. Um. So I like. I'm like I don't like hair on the back of a neck. Uh huh. You know, like where it's like growing from your back up. Yeah. And it's like connected to the head on your hair head. Mm-hmm. So I like make sure to keep that because I I just don't like sitting. I know this is like sounds judgmental. But sitting behind a guy who's like super hairy, it just makes them look like unkept in a way that's not like sexy to me personally. Mm-hmm. When they have like this insane amount of hair, not they don't. There's no separation of head hair and body hair, back hair. Yeah, like it's like a werewolf. Yeah, that sounds mean. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Get, it's not my personal preference. I dated this guy one time that was like, so I mean, like, yeah, like it looked like he had a sweater on when he had his shirt off, like so so thick like robin williams harry yeah. and he would wear like the deepest like the mm-hmm. lowest deepest v-neck shirts and have just so, all like, of his hairy over. chest Ugh, so gross. Well, I, well when some like elderly men sometimes their hair just some for some reasons just starts becoming more straight and uh-huh. less curly uh-huh. and so like i remember i think a lot of men kind of maybe equate that back especially back in the day maybe the 80s like wearing like a you know, those um, kind of those golf shirts or whatever. Mm-hmm. And but like they had to have like this long white. I think my grandpa might have been one of these people, to be honest. I'm imagining my dad like, right now. So the like long white, long chest white hairs. Like uh, how their eyebrows don't stop growing uh-huh. and like the ear hair. And it's like Ugh. all just like long and hanging. Yeah. Out. <laughs> but you think that it was like a status symbol, mm-hmm. like, yeah. like hanging the white hair out of your yeah. the top of your shirt. Like I'm sexy. Like yeah. I have, I have um, hair. Yeah. I'm not, not into it. Um, I've been like becoming a weird hermit slash like agoraphobic. Person. Oh, really? Yeah. Usually you have a hard time staying in. Yeah, I know. It's been really weird. Huh. Like I started, I actually started freaking myself out. And then finally, um, like Kenny and I went to go to Seaside for Valentine's Day. And like um, he took me to feed my friends the harbor seals that oh. I have a, a strong relationship with. They're so <laughs> they cute. are. I love them so much. <sighs> Um, but I was like, kind of was weirded out because there's like this one that's my favorite, the one that like flaps her mouth mm-hmm. like rapidly. I took a video of it, but she just looks like some old car- old timey like cartoon Aww. character, and she like slaps her mouth together. But that's like her trick, uh-huh. her trademark. And she was either just tired, like Kenny said, it was probably a busy weekend for them, and maybe they're just like you know not they have not, a lot of like, seal plans. Yeah, but they were just kind of lazy, like having a lazy day. But um, the one that like flap or slaps his belly Aww. was doing slap his belly, and then the one that does sp- like splashes you. And mm-hmm. Kenny, Kenny was like soaking wet. I didn't get like he didn't splash me, but I looked over at Kenny, and he was just like drenched. Mm. Um, Are these that was um, wild? No, they're, they're the ones. In a, yeah, in the aquarium. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, they're at the seaside aquarium. Oh, Which. yeah, I've been there. I've seen the guy that slaps his belly. Mm-hmm. He's been there a long-ass time. They live to be, like, I just think I, like, spit all over your leg. But um, they, one of them, I know, like, they said that I think one of them was, like, 33. Yeah. Um, there's one that's, like, as, I know there's one that's as old as Savannah because I saw, like, it was, like, in 1996 or whatever. But they've got to be because yeah. slapping belly guy was there when <laughs> Dave and I went there together. Oh, dang. On, like... A wedding anniversary. Oh, Like, I think shit. before we even had kids. Had a kid. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, yeah. How's your nose healing with your boo-boo? <laughs> Fine. God, that's, oh, my God. That's such Do a you know what I was talking to... about? Yeah. The, like, razor thing that, like, shaves all the peach fuzz off. I, like, went like a... <laughs> and, like... Like a straight razor? Yeah, like a... kind oh, of. Oh, God. Yeah, those are gnarly. I know. It feels so nice, though, if you can get all your peach fuzz off. I just haven't done it in a really long time. And I did it, and I just went, I aggressively went for my upper lip. Yeah. And I just nicked right, right on the very bottom of my nose. Yeah. Right on top of my lip. That's a suck-ass place. I've given myself a paper cut there by licking an envelope. Oh, yeah. That's exactly, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's 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 a good way to explain where it it is. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hmm. Oh my God, this, last night, Patrick got a phone call 
from one of his like old army buddies. He got invited to a four day hunting trip in Florida hunting alligators. <gasps> Whoa. So it's like him and a bunch of other army buddies. Whoa. That's like And it's like, like a it's like a wounded warrior. I don't think it's I don't think it's actually sponsored by Wounded Warrior, but it's like a disabled veteran thing Whoa. where they uh his plane will be paid for, his uh room will be paid for, his food will be paid for. Damn. All the hunting everything. Whoa. And he was like, oh, well, I got to talk to Cherish about... I was like, go! What? <laughs> yeah. That sounds amazing! Yeah. Damn. So the only bummer is that it's on the same weekend as my brother's wedding. Oh. And I was like, dude, you... I'm sorry. Like, you you have to go to yeah. that. Like, he needs that so bad. Yeah. That man time and, like, <laughs> yeah. killing alligators? What, what the fuck? The fuck, yeah. Isn't that nuts? That is nuts. I'd be so terrified, but I'm also not Patrick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about being able to... No, they, like, live for that shit. Yeah. Like, that's gnarly. Yeah. That's... Oh, it sounds like... Yeah, it definitely sounds like a must... Like, a... I, I mean, yeah, I would drop everything, go do it. Yeah, like, I wouldn't have it on my bucket list, but if it can't, like something if like you that, were some Patrick, opportunity. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it might not be if some like he, I was just sitting around, like, but yeah, you have to, you have to go. His dream right. is to like fight a bear. That's oh. like his, like he wants to. That's like his bucket <laughs> list thing. Yeah, like he wants to fight a bear, like huh. with his bare hands. Oh, I have one other. I have one thing. Hold on, that I want. Stan, to no way, Jose. You go lay down. It's naughty bear boy. Uh, I got a message today on our Instagram. Oh, <clears throat> this person said, uh, I just wanted to write in. I wanted to share that I'm currently getting a divorce, which is definitely one of the worst times of my life. I have two children and it helps so much to hear you guys talk about your tough times, especially divorce, because it makes me feel less alone. Even though I asked for it, I'm still a mess. Of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have a very loving husband and relationship with him. However, we are just not compatible. And then they said, anyway, crazy bus story. Sophie is one brave badass. Mm -hmm. um, I'm enjoying your show. I'm glad that you are continuing to put out episodes. Podcasts are a powerful way to help others. I bet you didn't even know that that would happen in this process, but I'm here to tell you that it is. Mm -hmm. That's You're really nice. sweet. Yeah, that's like so nice. Yeah. Hillary, for one, you know, thank you so much for saying that. But like, yeah. um, you know, I've, I've had my fair share of divorces. <laughs> I've just, but honestly, divorcing a really nice, wonderful person is way harder than divorcing the piece of shit asshole. Yeah. That you just can't wait to get away from. It's so hard to even bring up the idea of getting divorced when you're like, you're not miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not in a bad situation. You're not fighting. You're not doing, it's just, it's just not love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's so sad and it's so hard, but I just want to say that like after the fact, looking back at that time in my life, like talking finally talking about getting a divorce from Dave mm -hmm. and starting that process it mm -hmm. was horrible mm -hmm. it was so so hard and like i felt like the worst person in the whole world and everyone around me made me feel like the worst person in the whole world because he's the greatest guy ever what's mm -hmm. wrong with you you know and it's so hard to explain to people there's nothing terribly terribly wrong but it's just not right right but i totally understand that like uh that just when you're just not compatible it's so hard when it's like it's so close to being right yeah but it's just not but oh what i was gonna say is that i can say now that going through all of that really hard stuff was so, 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 so worth it. Yeah. And it sucks when you're in it, but it, you get through it. Yeah. And it gets better. And you can continue to co-parent, like, amicably 
please co-parent amicably, you know, and just like do everything you can to keep your family a family because it can be. I consider Dave family, mm -hmm. you know, like he's and he's my kid's dad and he's like, I'm not in love with him, but like, yeah, you know, I'm glad that he's a part. I'm really glad that he's my kid's dad. I'm really right. glad that he's a part of our family. Mm -hmm. um, but, and both of us are just so much happier, you know? Yeah. Um, I have an email to read you. Ooh, yeah, read away. Yeah. Sophie asked, she was like, do you guys do like a special episode, episode where you just read other people's emails? Or do you read somebody's email like every other episode? Or do you, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. We don't really have a... We don't have a plan maybe we for should it. have we kind more of, of structure maybe but I don't know. for now we just read them whenever the fuck we want yeah and i have one okay i have not read this yet okay the following story happened to me about 11 years ago when i a 20 something female decided to travel to barcelona by myself it's arguably the worst day of my life not only because of how shitty it was at the time but also because it has left me with lasting anxiety I had just moved to Ireland and decided I wanted to go traveling but couldn't find anyone to go with me. I booked myself a week or so long trip to Spain and stayed in the most beautiful hostel up in the mountains just outside Barcelona. Oh. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. The first five days were amazing. I ate great food, drank wine, and met some really great people. On the sixth day there, I went to the beach and met some people who seemed really cool and had a, a great time chatting with them. They invited me to go for a beer before I got the train back to my hostel, and I thought, for sh I thought, sure, why not? They were a couple in their 30s and just seemed so normal. I definitely did not feel threatened or like I was making a dangerous choice by going with them. We went to the bar for one beer, and I had to leave to catch my train. As I was walking out the door, suddenly everything started to sound and feel funny. I started to panic, and suddenly they were right there trying to drag me down the sidewalk. Oh, my God. The last thing I remember is screaming, what did you give me? And then I woke up across the street hey. so high on drugs. Uh-oh. My shirt was covered in blood, which I later realized was coming from my lip and cheeks, which I had been biting. Oh, gosh. Anyone who's ever taken party drugs likely knows what I'm talking about. I still had my wallet and passport, so I don't think they were trying to rob me, and to this day, I still wonder what their intentions were. Jeez. Oh, a nice lady gave me water and sat with me until an ambulance and police arrived. Unfortunately, they just seemed to think I was a stupid American tourist who had partied too hard. I just wanted to get back to my hostel and go to sleep because I was honestly high out of my mind and just felt awful. I somehow walked to the train station only to realize that the train wasn't running anymore. So I had to get an insanely expensive taxi back to my hostel. Oh gosh. Try explaining while well, high as shit to a taxi driver who speaks a different language, how to get to your hostel up in the mountains. <sighs> oh no. <sighs> After about an hour of him driving around, he just stopped and let me out in a place that looked like the hill that went up to my hostel. Oh my gosh. If it seems like my shitty day has peaked, you are wrong. Oh no. Because as I'm walking up this hill, high on drugs, confused about what had happened, crying my eyes out, I realize there is an animal behind me. <gasps> A wild boar oh. was chasing me up the hill. That's in all caps. Fuck Like, that. actually running after me. I am not a person that runs, let alone up a steep hill while high. Anyway, I ran up the hill and was so happy to see the hostel. I spent the next two days just waiting to go home and feeling like a fucking idiot for letting that happen to me. You're not an idiot. No. Uh, it was definitely an eye-opening event, which made me trust less and keep more of a guard up, and is probably my worst experience to date. Mm. No name. Mm. Wow. That is, like, gives me, like, weird chills and just, ugh. What were their intentions? I know. I know. Why did they leave her there? <sighs> oh, God, that's so scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Thank you for sending that. That is yeah. terrifying. And um, 
pretty good candidate for uh, the worst day ever. Yeah, I definitely concur. That is real bad. <laughs> Boy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Those, oh, uh, I mean, I haven't been near a, like a, like a wild boar in the sense that of what this person's talking about. But I know like in Tucson, like the javelinas could get really like territorial and, um, especially if they had their babies with them, mm. they would come after you. And, uh, we, my, fa my mom and I, and my brother were chased by like a javelina when we were, yeah, we were, they, well, we were on a walk. I was on my bike and I was like doing another dumbass bike move, which was having my dog on a leash oh, yeah, that's the while worst. riding my bike uh -huh. next to me. And my mom had my brother in a stroller and the javelina came out from the bushes and then saw um, us or whatever and got started getting aggressive. But my dog pulled away from like out of my, her leash pulled her out of my hand and then went after them. And all you just heard in the bushes was just like these horrible Ugh. sounds of just a pig and peace. a dog fighting. Yeah. Ugh. And my dog came out limping and she was just shredded like her skin. Like they have like big teeth. They have like talons. They have all kinds of, and they have all kinds of disease. And I gotta look this up. Have so scary. What's it called? Have uh, Havelina. It's J A V E L I N A. Oh wait. Yeah. Mm, cute. <laughs> they're cute. They're cute. But they are like I don't know. I just remember being out in the desert at night one time and hearing them the Instagram. uh growl like growling or not growling. They don't it's like I don't know, it's hard. It's like a deep I don't know, like snorting. I guess it's like a deep guttural sound that they make. But there was a pack of them in front of my car and I turned the headlights on and they were just like, we were just like very close <sighs> to each other face to face. Yeah, they're usually not bad if, in, unless they like are trying to protect their young, which is understandable, but you don't want to, like you really don't want to fuck with them in that scenario because if they do kind of attack you, it's not so much what they like the sh they can do damage wise, which is not great either if they, whatever, talon your artery. But um, is there, like, bacteria? Oh, and yeah. And they're, like, garbage guts. Like, they go, like, break into garbage cans and, like, you know, it's just rotten Is stuff. your dog okay? Yeah. My, it's one of those shitty dad scenarios where he refused to take her to the vet. Luckily, we had medication that we used for, like, our horse. There was, like, this iodine solution. And so my mom just, like, dabbed that on her wounds and they... Healed fine, but she should have had stitches for yeah. sure. Like especially the crazy like, scars. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. She was up. She was part Sharpe, part pug. Oh, um, God. yeah. She was the cutest thing. She was just like a wrinkly so pug. Yeah, yeah. Bear. She was. She was awesome. She was very protective of me, though. Especially, like especially, and that was the kind of the. That's why my dad made me get rid of her because if he went to go, like, you know spank me or anything like if he you know grab me or whatever she would go after him oh, like, go, yeah. like nuts yeah and she would tear only he was the only person in the house that she would destroy his things like she would oh, no. destroy his shoes she would destroy his belts oh, and no. he was very into his shoes and belts and yeah. things like that and because she just hated him like but um yeah she kept she kept trying to attack him and so he was like yeah yeah you're getting rid of this dog and i I definitely hated him for that because she was only yeah. two and she was like my BFF, you know. Aww. Anyway, um, not to make that whole tra like tragic sounding story like about stupid me and Havelina. Um, no, I. But every time I read someone else's story, I'm also hoping that it'll you know spark something in one of us to remember. Yeah, a story of our own. So that was perfect. Right. Well, I guess I do want to say that um, um, I don't. I don't know what they said. It was something about um, feeling stupid to get in that kind of situation, something like that. Oh, on oh, the email. Okay. Um. Where? What, yes. Was it? Uh, I spent the next two days just waiting to go home and feeling like a fucking idiot for letting that happen to me. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Um, you cannot. <laughs> no. You, you cannot take the blame for that. No, it's, um, 
has happened and will happen to mm-hmm. all sorts of people. Right. Well, and people definitely that I've known that I know are highly responsible people and um, careful, cautious people have had, you know, yeah. been slipped drugs like, you know, n- maybe not the same type of drugs, but like um, people like are roofie. crazy, yeah. sneaky. And that's like, I can definitely relate to that feeling because of the, um, that incident that I had at, when I had gone to that bar and some guy like slipped something. In that case, like I've definitely felt, I definitely did a lot of like um, various forms of thinking that I was um, a total idiot for that happening. Um, one being that I like went to a bar like by myself mm-hmm. and uh, still not your fault. Yeah, but but I I do remember like um, also thinking that instead of being drugged, that I just lost control of my drinking, you know, intake, thinking and that, that you blacked yeah, out yourself. Yeah. And I actually, when I realized that I didn't, was because I I had left my debit card open, like an open tab, mm-hmm. but all that was on there was um, like one like shitty Miller, Miller high life mm-hmm. and one like shot of whatever the whiskey was, but I had gone to the bathroom. It was a small bar with, you know, um, there was like a couple of people sitting next to me that were like tourist people that I had been talking to. And then there's creepy dude to the right of me. And then there was the bartender and it was a very small, you know, space. So I would have, you know, I left my drink there. I left my drink to go to the bathroom and I'm sure that's when the person, you know, put something in my drink. Which anyone would do in that situation. You think at least like the bartender's right Yeah, here. right. Exactly. Nobody's gonna yeah. and the take cu- that risk. And I don't think it was the couple because they were really nice to me. Well, I know it wasn't the couple because I woke up in that guy's bed. Oh um, so yeah, I um, like woke up and uh, there's I was in some strange house that I oh had God. no idea where I was, who this person was next to me, and he was really creepy, oh like a lot older, and also just seemed like a kind of like like one of those like crazy like like a like a John Wayne Gacy like kind of like creepy mm-hmm. type of a guy. Like he had some kind of well, strange yeah yeah. Um, and I knew that he had like done something to me because I was on my period and my tampon was laying on the ground. Oh my God. Yeah. And, uh, and then I just, I was like, I need to, you know, I need to go. And then he was like trying to invite me on a future date to go like on a motorcycle ride with him. What the fuck? And I still had no idea where I was. And the like most fucked up part about that was going outside, looking around, not recognizing anything and then getting him to take me back to the bar so I could get my car and get the fuck out of there. And then realizing that he was my next door neighbor that lived in the house behind where I used to live in my RV on Thelma's property. Yeah. And I would like have to see him like pulling out of his driveway and just hoping and praying that he wouldn't recognize me, um, like sneaking around. So like I wouldn't run into him ever again. Um, but he was oh super creepy. God. Yeah, I found him. I found out what his name was because I went to ask Thelma if she could tell me the name of the person that lived behind because I wanted to report him. Yeah. Even though I didn't go because at first I didn't go to the hospital. I didn't yeah. get a rape kit or anything um, because I, I thought that was my fault. Like I thought I I got too drunk and right. I went home with some disgusting man, even though like I've never done that before, no. you know. Um Oh At least like God. that, yeah. <clears throat> um, and I remember so, this happening, and I remember being just yeah. It really fucked me up yeah. because I just mainly about like it's like just blaming myself, right? And then and that that's so 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 common. Yeah. So, but I was able to find him on Facebook, and he had like two young daughters that looked about like Savannah's age, which was really creepy too. Like one of them like sitting on his lap, and it, just the whole thing was really gross and I was happy to hear though that like Thelma said he was like an asshole I was like like that she wasn't like one of his her favorite neighbors or you know she's like why like did he say something to you I never told her what he did 
but I did go to the police and I reported it just so that they would have his name in case, you know, anybody else ever had that experience to them that they would have a record of him doing, you know, something yeah. like that. Cause I feel like the more you have kind right. of something on your record, the more yeah. inclined that they are to like actually, you know, pursue. <sighs> I'm so sorry that happened to you. It's so well, fucking scary. <laughs> it was scary, but I mean, I did get through it and then I yeah. did realize, and I think that was, that was Adrian, um, meeting him that weekend. Cause I thought I had like an STD from this yeah. person. Cause like something felt r not right. And I went to that, um, wedding where I met Adrian, but he was going to take me, you know, to like, he definitely made me feel like it was not, that was not my fault. Yeah. Um, and was going to like take me to go, you know, like get checked out or whatever at Planned Parenthood and all that stuff. And was just like really supportive and kind about it. And, um, I think that was the weekend that I realized, you know, I stopped blaming myself, Yeah, you know? And, Good. um, and so, yeah, I just, but yeah, that, that definitely like, um, for a long time, it was just like going. And plus I had such a fuzzy memory of him because I was still not like clear right. headed, like what he looked like. I kept going places like the grocery store Fuck, or dude, different yeah. places and like restaurants and stuff. And being like, is that him? It scares me so when it's like someone that is hooded and masked and has or blindfolds them or whatever. And they mm -hmm. don't know who it was. Right. Just like living your whole life like that. Just, yeah. God, that's so scary. Yeah. I watched <sighs> this like recent documentary about this woman who had been brutally raped, like in her apartment. And, um, I guess we have to probably do another, um, <laughs> trigger, like a, warning. trigger warning. <laughs> um, but she had been like assaulted in her apartment by this man and she said that while the whole assault was going on, she was just focusing on his face so that she could etch yeah. in her memory what he, his features and everything. And several, like, I guess a couple of different times, she, um, you know, picked him, this particular guy out of a lineup. And then there was another assault very similar. And another woman picked him out of a lineup. And he spent, like, 10 years in prison. And he actually met the man in prison that was the guy that actually raped these women, but at that time they didn't have like DNA, you know, mm. testing or anything, but he knew. And the guy, I think even admitted to it later on, like while he was in prison with he him. He was like, you're in prison for what, for what I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he, the guy, like he was ready to kill this guy in yeah. prison. Cause he was like, you ruined my life, you yeah. know? And he wouldn't, he wouldn't admit to it to any like authority or anything that he, you know, raped, even though he was already serving a, a term for people fucking suck i know beyond. and then finally once like dna came to be yeah. he you know i guess it was like through the oj simpson trial he saw that what you know what they were able to find out because of you know dna testing and he requested from his attorney that they do that and they found out of course it was that other guy so they released him they're like hey guess what like you're going home today i fucking love it love it love it when cold cases are solved with dna yeah it makes me so happy right god but definitely they said like there's nothing that we can do to ever and that woman she then became in turn fearful once mm -hmm. they released the guy who didn't do it that he was going to have revenge on her <sighs> for her accusing him and now they're friends it's really cute like Aww. yeah Aww. Yeah, he 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 forgave her. He let her know, you know, I don't, I've never hold, held this against you. It wasn't your fault. Oh, um, that's you know. so awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was it was one of the ones that I've been watching that um, like a little more <laughs> uplifting. Yeah, but. we tried watching American yeah. Monster, mm -hmm. uh, and the reenactments we could not handle. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. It was so cringy. Yeah. But we couldn't do that one. But oh my god, so I got <laughs> Discovery Plus, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got it and I'm like, "Oh my god, there's so many true crime things on here." Uh -huh. I'm so excited. I've watched nothing but like 1000 Pounds Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've got yeah. Oh, which reminds me, on the way here, I got a text message from Patrick. OMG, Russian girl just flew out to see Jeffrey without him knowing, and he's already in another relationship with someone else. Drama oh my bomb. Oh, wow. You're only on Jeffrey? Yeah. 
Well, I'm not going to give any spoilers what's going on with that guy's life. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, but if don't. you don't want a spoiler, don't go um, become a member of the Facebook group called, like, 90 Day Are you? Fiance. Are and, you? Like, Life After Lockup or Love After Lockup Facebook group. Um, yeah. My <laughs> old coworker sent me up. Like, she was on it. And it's ridiculous. I can't believe oh. that. Um, oh, I was just. You go ahead. I was just remembering what you told me earlier about scout chewing on that. Vibrator. Yeah, vibrator. Did I t- I've, I've told you the story of Savannah finding my mom's like crusty old vibrator, right? No. Oh. Tell me. Okay. So, Savannah, I want to say she was like four. Uh huh. Not very old. Like a still in like I think toddlerish, like the verge of to- toddler going into whatever the next phase is. Uh huh. <laughs> like four, and we were hanging out in the apartment of my mom. And she went in the bedroom to go, I think my mom told her to go find her shoes. And so she went in the bedroom and she was, you know, looking around for her shoes. And I guess she was like looking under the bed and she came out of the bedroom with the vibrator pressed up against her cheek and uh-huh. her shoulder Aww. and was just like, p- p- like petting, petting it. it like, like <laughs> grandma, cute. Oh, grandma, so cute. Because it was, like, one of those ones that has, like, a dolphin clitoris stimulator <laughs> and, like, purple a and dolphin? pearls. Yeah. yeah, it had pearls in it that, like, spun around while it, oh when you turned God. it on, they'd, like, j- like, rotate around. So she thought it was just, like, a little mermaid gift for yeah. her. Aww. It was, like, purple and iridescent. And she just, it, but it was, like, it had, like, like, my mom... <gasps> like flew across the room to like get it out of her hands really quickly because my brother at the time I think he was like 13 he was just like too young I don't think she wanted him surprisingly like to know about that in her life but I just remember it being like like crusty oh like not clean oh and she's just like rubbing it against her (laughs) cheek (laughs) petting it yeah and I was so grossed out I was like mom I remember being more mad about that than anything because I was like you need to put that in the dishwasher or boil it or whatever yeah. you do. Uh, my mom later the blew the motor in the <laughs> vibrator. She said it started smoking, like when she was using it, like aggressively, like smoke. Like I don't know how she managed to do it, but she was just like, I guess, got too into it, and then it like burnt out. And then it was an expensive one too. It was like a hundred and like fifty dollars or well, something. Yeah, at the time. I had all like bells and whistles. Yeah. Now I understand why you're. Talking about boring, it wasn't anything boring. Boring dildos. No, yeah, said, like cause it's pl- like a smooth, like rocket. Um, <laughs> with with her, nothing. Yeah, at least, um, at least Savannah did not put it in her mouth. <laughs> God, but yeah, no, that yours. At least mine was not crusty. <laughs> That's fucking gross. <laughs> My mom would be so mad if, um, hopefully she just can't ever listen to this podcast because I feel like I just totally throw her under the bus it's for so many things. We only have like 2,000 listeners. <laughs> There's no way it's going to make it to her. Yeah. You know, my mom has COVID right now too, right? Oh, really? Yeah. And she made a very interesting Facebook post the other day. Oh, God. But, you know, she's also not, she's not vaccinated or anything. Right. She's anti-mask. Right. Um, all that, like, this is my God given right to not whatever, any of that stuff. But she's also like, so she got it from the woman that she lives on her property with. Yeah. And I guess like, according to this woman's son, because like I reached out to her son, cause I've known him since I was like 19. And, uh, I was like, Hey, like, I know this is not your responsibility at all. Um, I know you're in Tucson, which is two hours away from where my mom is. But, um, I just found out, you know, I think pretty sure my mom has COVID. She wouldn't get tested or anything, but she has like all the symptoms and stuff. Uh, she kept saying like, what's the fucking point of getting tested? What's it going to fucking do? I'm just going to lay in this RV anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well maybe it's just so a, you can report it. Maybe they can help you. Like, since you don't have anyone there, cause at least they did that for me, the health department asked me if I needed assistance with somebody delivering groceries, yeah. if I lived alone, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, the, you could probably get, you know, that somebody can help you like drop off water mm-hmm. or food because she didn't have anything. And I was like, you can't go 
Yes, anyway, she wouldn't go anywhere. And the woman was quarantining in Tucson with her son on, like, his property. He has, like, a trailer. So she was staying there. But, yeah, my mom is just out there by herself, like, hours away. And from is the daughter, the crazy daughter that wants to kill my mom? Yeah. Still, like she's on, still the on the loose? loose. Oh, shit. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, it's just every time. And she, so then she asked me this last time I talked to her if I would want. She was pissed. Because the woman finally came back, the friend slash landmate, and dropped her off two stale pieces of cardboard, like, pizza uh-huh. that was, like, old and just, like, you know. Uh-huh. And then, like, a couple of, like, expired, like, off-brand cans of soup. And so my mom was, like, really mad that she didn't bring her, you know, like, some. And then she, and then she said she just drove off uh-huh. with her husband, who's the Native American man that has dementia. Uh-huh. Who, I don't know if I told you, but he was, he at some point was like hitting on my mom because he's, this he's not. This is quite cast of characters. <laughs> yeah. And my mom's like, yeah, she just got, she dropped me off this shitty cardboard pizza. Mm-hmm. And she's like, and a couple of this fucking shitty off-brand inspired cans of soup. And then just jumps in a van, drives off with an Indian. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now she wants me to fly down to Tucson or to Walt Tucson to then go to Bisbee to help her move her trailer and her car oh my or her God. RV. She needs someone to drive the car so she can drive the RV off this property because now she's pissed that she didn't get more than pizza. <laughs> it's not even like that the daughter wants that, to kill yeah, her. That's what gets her to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Not that she's like on the verge of being murdered, but that that pizza oh, that pizza was shit. Yeah. Good God. Well, it did scare me, these last messages that she sent me that Patrick was saying is like incriminating evidence, like if something were to happen, that she would get blamed. My mom would get blamed for the murder of this woman who's trying to murder her. <laughs> yeah, because what was she saying? She, what, was, she, was, she was saying things that just were like, you know, I need to get rid of this demon or something. Yeah, demon. they're calling each other demons. <laughs> <laughs> like I've come too far on this earth to be... You know, um, taken out inti- by a demon, or yeah, intimidated or taken out by a fucking demon, and like I won't hesitate to use my Joe Bonanno, <laughs> Dillinger, whatever gun on this demon. Oh God, yeah. I mean, if she <laughs> dies of a gunshot wound, like <laughs> it's gonna seem gonna be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First degree, mama. So anyways, yeah, I'd like her to get off that property anyway, just so yeah. she doesn't go to prison. But she'd probably enjoy prison. <laughs> I think she would. <laughs> I do. I think she'd make all kinds of friends. She really I mean, would. I can't. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm kidding to that. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Do it. Well, I had a DUI. Um, <laughs> a f- it's been, I guess, I guess a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, not long enough to be able to go to Canada. But, um, but long enough long to be enough kind of to, funny. I guess so, yeah. Because um, I was chasing a piece of ass, and I shouldn't have been driving my car. Is um, that what happened? You were chasing a piece of ass? Yeah. yeah. There was this guy that I was really into, and the same night, I was trying to also flee from this unsavory character that was, like, downtown Olympia. So I went into one of, like, the local... Uh, watering holes uh-huh. <laughs> and saw this guy friend of mine and then we like got to talking and like talking led to like longer talking and yeah. then we basically were ended up being there like to close the bar and well he invited me over to his apartment and I was like oh like I'm gonna slam a vodka tonic for some liquid courage mm-hmm. by the time I get to his apartment it It'll will hit kick me in because I'm only going a few blocks away I I'm fine. Like I, I or right. I felt I'm not. I obviously, it was not fine to drive, but I felt fine for the distance that I had to go. But I hit a curb oh. in a roundabout oh. in front of the police. Oh, and the vodka tonic did start kicking in, but mm-hmm. not until I was like halfway through the being because your adrenaline starts going, so yeah. it makes the alcohol like kind of like go through your bloodstream. I think faster. Oh, jeez. Because I actually had to hear the tape or the, you know, the recording or whatever um, by my, uh, whatever, my court appointed appointed attorney played it back for me. And it was so embarrassing just hearing, like, the change of my voice when I just, like, start going into, like, slurring-sounding drunk, dumb girl. (laughs) Um, It was very dumb. (sighs) 
And then the other thing was the dude, because I was following him in his car, yeah. and he stops and gets out and is trying to approach, and they're like, you can't do that. And yeah. I'm pretty sure you came from the same place she did, and I doubt you want us to you yeah. know, check your Don't want to draw attention to level. yourself. Yeah, so they <sighs> sent him home. And then I go to the old jail, and then I drink a bunch of water in the sink in the bathroom, thinking that's going to help me because they had to do they had to do a second one, but that actually makes things worse. Oh I guess no! It also, like, helps the process of you know like. So I actually blew higher the second time oh, that I did the first time. He's like, most people, he's like, their alcohol level starts decreasing. He's like, this is very odd. Uh, are you he's drinking like, in here? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yours is increased. They were actually really nice to me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, like, they didn't, they handcuffed me in the front instead of my back, which I guess, you know, was like, I guess, kind gesture in terms of police. And um, he actually dropped me off at the guy's apartment. <laughs> He didn't make me like do like any kind of whatever. He, he, um, yeah, dropped me off at the guy's apartment, the, like the next early, early morning. Did you ever get your piece of ass? I did, and it was sad. It oh was no! Sad ass because Not I was worth so it. upset about oh. the DUI that oh. I just because I had a really good driving record. Like yeah. at that point, like I was like on the highest tier of my car insurance that a person, <sighs> and I just thought I was like, this is the perfect time to get a new car because I have like really great. You know, like, my insurance rate is really great. You were driving the tuna can CRV? Yes. So I did have to spend a week in a jail, but I did make friends there. And I you did liked kind of, it. I liked it. I remember. I, I know that sounds really horrible, and I'm not encouraging anybody to go get arrested so they can have a potential. No one thinks you're encouraging Make friends that. in jail. But. but, yeah, I remember asking you when you came out. It's like, mm -hmm. how's jail going? You're like, it was great. They were really nice to me in there. Well, and what, I think I what, got lucky. And what you had said was that being in a place where you can't do anything else, you don't mm -hmm. have to think about work, you don't have to think about your friends you're and fed. their drama, you're fed, you're, you got TV, Close. didn't you? Oh, yes, we had the TV in the meeting room, yeah, where yeah. we could have, like, times, and I, the one lady really liked watching Project Runway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. there's, like, other cool old ladies, right? Well, there was, like, this badass bitch lady who... This, she'd been in there for most of the ladies that were in, because I also got, I guess, lucked out from what I was told by the other ladies um, that I was with, that they put me in the work release group, so I didn't mm -hmm. have to be in the main. I don't know if they just like were like, oh, God, this woman wouldn't survive mm -hmm. <laughs> if we put her in like the general population. So I was on the, with the work release um, gals, so they have a little bit more privileges and stuff, but the one woman that was there, she'd been there forever, like, I don't know, like 20 years. Like, I think she was in there for like a pretty, Moida. like, um, like, I think she like murdered her, her husband or nice. something like that. I bet you but she did. yeah, but she was awesome. And I probably, I don't, I don't know what the circumstances were, but I don't think the husband sounded like he was a great guy. Oh, um, yeah. so, um, but she was just very insightful. She was just like wise, yeah. um, like, I don't know, like, I think she used to like, you know, roll with like a gang. <laughs> like she was just, and she really liked RuPaul. And, um, and that she would get kind of like, she, she was basically, I think she'd been in there, like she had that seniority. She would definitely get to choose what was on TV. And like other ladies would try to argue with her that they wanted to watch the crime channel. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> even but, in jail, they're yeah. like, yeah. but I thought they were going to be like mean to me and they were like offering me stuff. Like somebody offered me like, like a special toothbrush versus like the shitty one that they provide or like gave me like. You know, because they can buy stuff, I think, from yeah. the commissary where I just had, like, you know, you can't really take anything in there. Yeah. <laughs> but they had, like, earned things, and they were, like, sh share them with me. Aww. And, like, food things. Like, if they didn't eat their biscuit, they, you know, like, yeah. asked me if I wanted their biscuit. Or, like, some girl gave me some, like, licorice. I've watched a lot of um, prison shows, and that's really nice. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah. Anyway, but not... they could use that stuff to get weird prison drugs. Yeah. Like the cigarettes that are like dipped in formaldehyde or whatever right you know what i'm talking about um i've heard of that yeah <laughs> yeah i also heard remember hearing like this um person talking about a common beverage of um alcohol like beverage or you know um to replace is uh what they would call ocean water which was white rain hairspray i guess Ew. women would drink white rain hairspray uh. um and you know in to get water? to get fucked up yeah 
white rain oh. to get yeah so they could get like drunk oh um, and that's just gnarly it's like drinking listerine kind of like you're at that oh. when you get to that point you're not you know you've oh. got things have really advanced uh-huh. but woo! yeah you gotta go to your thingy well your, i and... probably should get a little more attractive <laughs> Where are you are kidding me got my butt i got my bullshit oh, shirt i on. love your bullshit shirt I want to take a picture of your bullshit shirt. Yeah. Let me see. The, it's from that movie, The Jerk. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like a little kid wearing this shirt. Oh. And I think it would be so funny to get shit, like, shout. Oh, Scout. Scout. Yeah. <laughs> Scout one. Yes. I would love that. Yeah. Um, I'm still just, like, all <laughs> staring. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Uh, um... <laughs> it's torture either way okay yeah all right um you can find us on facebook it's uh we have a group it's the worst day of my life there are really fun awesome people in there i'm i'm really enjoying the the facebook group um yes you can find us on instagram i'm gonna start putting more pictures on instagram um oh, I, I always forget about instagram i know well i was thinking about doing like Pictures that are, like, relevant to what we talked about. Oh, yeah. Like, the Sophie's Best Crash. Like, I did a few pictures, you know? Yeah. That. Like, I want to do stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, Instagram, the worst day of my life dot podcast. And then um, if you have a story to send it us, you can send it to the worst day podcast at gmail.com. And... Just remember that it could always be worse. Always. Um, well, see you. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's like the loudest and most enthusiastic we get the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs>